Hi everyone, today I'm gonna share three cards that I made using some fun gnome themed stamp and die sets from MFT Stamps that they released as part of their May release. So we are gonna use the Gnome Place Like Home die set to make a card and then we're also gonna use the Hanging With My Gnomies stamp and die set to make uh, two additional cards. So we're gonna use a combination of techniques here. We're gonna do some water coloring, some die cutting and some Copic coloring. So let's go ahead and get started with the first card. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel here. This is Arches cold press paper, and I'm just going to wet it a little bit in a little bit of a raggedy um, pattern. And then I'm going to apply three different shades of Daniel Smith watercolor down. So that first color is quinacridone gold. And then this color is quinacridone pink. And then we're gonna add some rows of ultramarine at the bottom. And I just love the way those three colors just kind of complement each other and flow into one another. And I'm really making sure that I get some nice raggedy patterns on the edge there. And then this is the hearts and twine die from MFT stamp. So I just um, cut out um, the die cut on some gold cardstock. And then the sentiment comes from the hanging with my Nomi stamp set, which is adorable. So we have our little girl gnome, our little boy gnome, and I'm just popping them up on some foam tape on either side of the card. And then we're gonna put our sentiment right in the center there, popped up on foam tape. And that is a speech bubble die that was a free with 60 some time ago um, from MFT stamps. I'm not sure if it's still available. I've been having fun with quarantine, just going through all my old products I haven't used before and trying to give them a try. So now we're going to move on to our second card. So this is going to be a congratulations on your new home card. So we're going to do that same watercolor technique where I wet the background in a waggedy patch. Um, a pattern and then we're going to add our greens and our blues and the green at the bottom is sap green and then there's some ultramarine blue at the top and I think I also use some um, Indian throne as well although I think ultramarine would work just fine there and I'm just going to let the colors flow together a little bit I'm adding a little cerulean blue here a little lighter shade just because I thought it was a little dark and then I'm adding a little bit more water and then I thought it would be fun to add some specks of paint. So I'm taking some indigo and I'm just gonna add some dark blue um, flex. And then we're gonna do the same with the sap green. And then I'm also gonna take a little bit of the light blue, the cerulean blue here and do the same. And I love how some of the spatters get caught up in the center and they um, add even more of a pattern there. Just so pretty. All right, we're going to set that aside to dry and now we can put together our die cuts. So this is the gnome place like home die set and you can make this adorable little gnome house. So I'm just putting some blue cardstock on the back just so that we have a background for our windows and the little window and the door. I cut out the frames for the window on some dark brown cardstock. And the base of the house is with some cream cardstock. Now we're going to apply the door. And I have some um, wood grain brown cardstock that I cut the door out from. I just thought it would give it a fun little texture there. And then I'm going to add the frame and the little stones on top. And then a little frame around the window as well. And then the doorknob. Had a little hard time keeping my glue from poking out from underneath there, but it's okay. Then we'll add our little stoop. Very, very gently there. And then for the top of our little gnome house, our little mushroom house, I just popped up the red top on some foam tape. And then we also have these cute little mushrooms, and I'm just going to put a red top on top of our white mushrooms. And then we'll add some more detail towards the end on these guys here. And now we're gonna add some little dots onto the house. So these little circles I think are intended for the flowers, the center of the flowers we're gonna add, but I thought they made cute little speckles on mushrooms too. So we're gonna add a few of those. And then I'm also gonna take a white gel pen and add some smaller little flecks to our house in a second. I'm gonna add the centers to the flowers here. So just have some yellow cardstock for the center and then some pink and lilac for the flowers themselves. Just using my 
jewel picker here on my crystal katana. And now we're going to add some different size um, circles as well with a white gel pen. So I'm putting some tiny ones, some medium ones, but all smaller than the large um, white dots that we added before. And I think that gives it just enough pizzazz to kind of dress up the die cut. I'm just going to finish adding my little specks there. And now we'll add our flower. So I'm going to add my lilac flower right behind the little mushroom top and then our pink flower right on top of the mushroom top. So it looks so cute. We have our little floral decoration on the top of the mushroom. And then we're going to just add a little bit of texture by adding some little white dots along the edges of the mushroom. So I'm just adding lots and lots of little white dots. The same way that if I were to add some shading to this, um, those are the same areas that I would kind of add the little white dots to. So I'm just kind of going up along the edge of the house, um, kind of in a little like triangle pattern there, just to give it a little bit of interest. You're barely going to notice it. It's just a little something special. For the sentiment, I um, embossed it on some dark wood grain cardstock. I think this is from Lawn Fawn. I just thought it went really, really well with a little outdoorsy theme for this card. We're going to put the whole watercolor panel onto an A2 size card base and then attach our little mushroom house right on top, directly on top of our card panel. And I'm going to arrange it so I leave a little bit of the green showing because I want it to look like it's sitting in the grass. And then we'll add our con congratulations on your new home sentiment right beneath that flat against the card panel. And then to decorate our sentiment, I'm just going to add the two little mushrooms we put together before. So we're going to put one in the upper left hand corner and then the other mushroom in the lower right hand corner. And then again, we'll add some little white specks with our white gel pen. It's just real gentle, just adding them in different sizes. So some small and some extra small little flecks there. And that is going to finish card two. And I just love the combination of the die cuts with that real pretty soft watercolor background. Just really, really cute. Okay, now we're going to move on to our third and final card. And this is a card that is made entirely with Copic markers. And we're going to do a lot of masking here. So we're going to stamp our little lady and gentleman gnome on the edges and then our gnome house right in the center. And I'm going to add masks to those three large images and we'll put some flowers behind them and then I'm just going to color in where the horizon line is so I know where the land meets the sky and just so that I can keep myself centered while I'm coloring I'm just going to add a base of light green down to the um, ground here and then a base of B21 to the sky. And I'm being a little careful because I did not mask off the two flowers on the edges, but I did add masks to the gnome in the gnome house. So I'm just going to kind of gently add in my sky and then we can take off the masks and start coloring in our main images. And then once I have those masks off, I'm just going to stamp some little of the little flying ladybugs in the background and I'm using black Versa fine ink for those. I'm going to let that dry before we color it in. Now we can move on to coloring in our little mushroom house. So I'm using a base of E41 and then I'm going to color in the windows with B60, nice violet shade. I think that's um, a nice alternative to making the windows yellow or blue. I think violet's real, real pretty. Um, and then we're going to add some shading along the edges with E44. So I'm going like under the roof with the shading and then on the bottom. And then I'm going to blend everything upwards with the E43, one of the midtones that we're using here. And then we're going to add some E41 and E42 to just blend everything further. And I'm trying to keep the center of that house really, really light and the edges like underneath the mushroom cap pretty dark. For the door, I'm going to use those same E40s, but later on I'm going to change my mind and color it in with some brighter E20s just to make the door pop a little bit. For the stones, we'll use some C3 and add some shading with a C7 there just to add some contrast. I'm adding just a little bit of shading along one edge of the stones and then we'll blend it together with a C5. And then I colored in the little door handle with a C7. 
And this is where I decided to make the door a little brighter and darker. So we're gonna use E23 and E27 as the base and then some E29 for some even darker contrast and focusing that color on the little ridges in the door like where the little wood slats would kind of separate just to reinforce that it's a little wooden structure. And then we'll add some shading with a B66 to our little window areas. Now we're gonna color in our little mushroom cap, our little um, mushroom top to our house and where it's gonna make it red with my favorite red combination. So I just added in my highlight color that YR12 towards the center. And then we're gonna add in our darkest shade, the R39, just um, in the little shadow areas, like around the edges of the image and then underneath the flowers. And then we'll add our R29 and just start bringing the shading in towards the center. So the way that I color generally is I have my darkest colors on the outside and I just move my way towards the center of the image going lighter and lighter, making sure that the very center of the image is the lightest. Um, it just adds a real nice dimensional dimensionality to the images and it makes the color pop real nicely. And then when I'm done, if I see that there are some areas that need some shading, um, I'll add some more like I'm doing here. So I'm adding a little extra R39 and R29 towards the right side, a little mushroom, just to add in some shading for where, um, you know, the light might not be hitting the mushroom. And then we'll color in our little ladybugs with some R29. And then we'll color the mushrooms with the same reds that we use for our roof. So that 12 in the center and then 39 along the edges and then just bringing everything towards the, the center there. And then for the centers of our flowers, I'm using Y04, and then we'll add a little bit of shading with a Y08 along the edge. And then we'll color in the grass around our little stones with some green, so G5 and YG67 there. And then some W2 for the little stones and W4 warm grays. And for our little gnomes, we'll give them some E00 skin with some E11 shading and then deepen the shading with E13. That's probably one of my favorite combinations for Caucasian skin tones, E00 and then E11 and E13. Just gonna color in the little flowers on our little mushroom house. So we're gonna use some pinks and some purples here. And if I had this to do over again, I would have made these little flowers white because the flowers that the little gnome man and the little gnome lady are gonna be holding are gonna be white. And I think it would have been really, really nice. And it would have added some balance to the scene to make those little flowers on top of the roof white as well. But usually when I'm coloring, I'll have some idea of where I want to go, but I usually honestly just color as I go and just make my color selections sort of as I go along. Um, and as I was going along with this one, I realized that I really, really liked having the little um, flowers be daisies that the little gnomes are holding. And um, so if I made this card again, I definitely make the little flowers on the house white. Okay, so for the little gnome lady, we're going to color her in with R81, 83, and 85, and 89 for her clothing. So the hat, I'm just adding in some shading where her hat is kind of bunching up a little bit. And around the edges of her clothing, I'll do the same thing. We'll have the little flower pot that she's holding be the same color as her clothes. And we'll color in the leaves around the flowers with some greens using some YG03 here for the little flowers on the edges. It's a nice bright color. It'll stand out from the background and then some shading with a YG17. And then for her hair, I thought it'd be nice to make her a little blonde gnome. So we're gonna give her a base of Y21 or Y23 and then some Y26 and then YR24 for our um, contrasting colors just to deepen up her hair a little bit. Um, it's not really easy to make it look like um, strands of hair on, on the little um, gnome lady because the image is so small. So I'm just making sure that we have some discrete areas where we have some light yellows and some darker yellows to reinforce the idea that it's hair. For our little gnome, we're going to color him in in blue green. 
and I'm using BG01 for the base for his hat and his clothes and then for the little parts of his hat that are folded inwards we're going to add our darkest shade there and then we'll add some BG07 to blend that in towards the center and with the hat I'm using the same method that I always do um, adding leaving the center pretty light leaving the edges dark and then also making sure to add some additional darkness around the little folds in the fabric and then we'll just finish up his clothing with those same colors we use for the hat and I just love the expressions on these little guys I love the way the little gnome man is looking at the little gnome lady. Um, they're small, but they still have such character in their faces. I just love it. For the beard, we're gonna use some warm gray. So I use warm gray five, three, and one on the beard there. And then for his shoes, we'll use some, the same colors we use for the door. So E23 and E27. And then for the shading on the white flowers, we're gonna use some warm gray. So I'm using warm gray three, maybe a little warm gray five on the very, very tip and then um, blend it outwards with a W0 or a W1. And I'm just being real careful to leave a lot of white in the center just so that they don't um, lose the effect with their white flowers. Now I'm gonna add some grass. I'm just taking some little flecks of YG03. And in hindsight, if I were to do this card again, I'd probably stop after I laid in this layer of grass um, but then I wanted to add some shadows. I wanted it to look like some of the grass was kind of pressed down a little bit in some areas. So that's why I'm kind of going over things with the YG 17. But then that effect is going to end up making me have to work much harder to um, get the whole background to blend. So if you want to stop right after that first layer, I think that's fine. Or you could go further like I am here and adding some deeper, um, greens to the scene to make it look like that area in front of the house is kind of pressed down because people I guess um, walk in and out of the house quite often so it just is all kind of pressed down and then the edges around the door are sticking out a little bit and then we'll make the forefront of the scene a little darker just to bring it forward and then um, just lighten up the background a little bit I like that little glow that's going on in the lower right hand corner behind the little gnome man and then once we finish, we can remove the painter's tape and we're gonna stamp the sentiment directly onto the card panel using a Misty. And then once we're done with that, we'll add some little white highlights and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So the sentiment I'm using is there's no one, no one like you, which is adorable. There are so many sweet little punny sentiments in this stamp set. Uh, you will have a ball just going through everything. Um, so I'm adding some white highlights, so I'm adding some little white speckles to the mushrooms and then a little bit of white highlight on the edges of the windows. And then we're going to add some little dots to our little flowers just to make them stand out against that um, red background there. And then we'll add some little highlights on the edges of the little mushroom cap. So I'm just being sure to make sure that they're nice curved accents along the little edges of the roof there. And then I added some little white dots to our ladybugs and then I'm adding a little flying um, pattern right behind them just with some little white flecks in a pretty curvy pattern there to make it look like they're just whooshing through the air around the little gnomes. Okay, so that's it. So those are our three cards for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you give these cards a try. It's so much fun and these stamps are just adorable. You will have a wonderful time and anyone you send these cards to will surely love them. Thanks so much and have a great day.